Yo, thanks for, for the introduction, Serios. Um, yeah, welcome. And um, yeah, let's see. I mean, um, basically, this is our agenda for today. So first of all, I just I will go over um, performance analysis um, to try to understand the parallel efficiency um, of applications to just in, in basically to understand um, 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 there are potential for um, optimization of your applications. If, if needed. So we go through different um, efficiency uh, matrix and um, try to understand a bit. I mean, I have some, I, I also include some, some examples of scalability um, um, of, of applications, which, we, which I use in my um, research, but also um, which is used on the, um, on the cluster. Um, no, my my disconnect. Sorry. Okay. I hope I'm back now. Um, and then um, later we will uh, look into profiling. Um, so we score P uh, to to look a bit um, how, how to do this. And then later in the afternoon, uh, we have a short introduction to HDF5 and um, um, parallel IO in HDF5. And we have to see how, how to distribute um, the time and, and how fast we are. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I put there some buffer time. So if you have questions also, um, write in the um, chat, or yeah, I think you can also open the microphone. Okay, so first of all, um, yeah, the slides are not there yet. Um, at least I put some some of their of their exercise and some of their on the contents. I mean, for the second part, we used um, um, some some um, package for for um, benchmarking, which in the source code I put into this for a folder here on on um, Cyclone. Basically, the um, course itself are at least the first part is um, uh, based on this uh, um, center of excellence um, for profile um, performance optimization and um, profiling or productivity. Where basically I um, I get basically the material um, for this um, this course. Um, I mean, I, I guess if you're interested in profiling your um, application, um, maybe it's the first to, to take a look. Um, um, this is a website where you also can find blog and, um, and tools and and YouTube videos. They have um, the, um, starts, you know, they have sessions like also online training and so on. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we will anyway. We will go. Uh, we will come uh, later also in this lecture um, to materials from from there. And, um, yeah. Um, okay, and and the, the source for HDF five I took from the NERSC homepage. Okay, so um, basically, um, why there is need for for optimization and um, uh, for for speeding up or for for parallelization is basically because of we are now living in this um, um, time where um, the, the clock speed of the, of the CPUs and um, all sorts of the GPUs are not increasing anymore, which you can see on the left side. So um, the, the frequency of your CPU um, or of also of the HPC um, CPUs are, are stuck um, around two um, gigahertz, which you can see on the left side. I mean, um, actually, I grow up still in the time where um, the the processors um, were increasing, the speed was increasing um, in the 90s, and then around 2000, um, uh, this, this stops. Uh, due to that, uh, what happens, um, it's still at this more slower, which you may be um, heard of, um, it's, it's still, um, yeah, maybe it starts now to slow down, but um, it, it didn't stop. So the, the density of the transistors, um, the number of transistors on the, on the device, uh, we're still increasing after 2000, which basically means that um, the number of, of cores um, on, on, on the CPUs are increasing. So you need basically, if you want to 
have still a speed up of your application, you need to go um, towards parallelization. Um, so you or basically you only um, gain performance um, um, by um, um, parallelize your applications. And due to that, um, optimization of your application becomes more challenging because you have um, a lot of different um, 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 things to, to take care of. So basically, um, the complexity of your applications um, increases. Um, yeah, for example, here, machine comp complexity increases. You have, uh, you have networks, you have a hierarchy of, of memory. So there are different ways to, um, and there, there, there can be different things where your application um, uh, has a bottleneck. And, um, so you're, you need um, to address these issues with um, different techniques. But first of all, you need to understand um, um, if you have uh, performance issues or um, if you want to, let's say, increase your performance or speed up your applications, you need, first of all, to understand um, uh, where are the bottleneck and, um, how to, uh, and um, um, that you understand what kind of um, uh, methods you, you can use to, to speed this up. Um, so basically, as, as I said, there, there is um, uh, nowadays you have to, to, go to parallelize your application to, to really speed up your applications. However, um, uh, in general, parallelization is also limited because you have always overheads. Um, so you cannot uh, your application you cannot fully um, parallelize all um, of your code in your application. So you have always some let's say, for example, yeah, you have non-parallelized regions where you need to communicate. Um, you have I/O. Um, so this limits basically um, the speed up which you can gain um, through um, parallelization. So there's this. Uh, so-called Arden Hamgal's uh, law, which um, uh, gives gives a basically a, a formula for that. Um, how theoretically, how um, what kind of speed up you can um, expect it. So it's basically a, a quite basic law. You have um, your um, you you can split up your um, let's say your your program in a, a part which is serial. So which basically consists of your I/O or of your um, where we need to, to do communications of so these regions, plus a, um, a region where you can, um, which you can parallelize, and then you can see if you can, if if, if you can ideally parallelize this and um, speed up this by um, by, by using more pro, uh, pro processors, you can um, get a um, you can get your expect speed up just by um, by this formula basically, and there there is a limit. Basically, you can. Uh, Increase or speed up the parallelization part, but the serial part will stay the same, and and so you you, you will reach um, depending on how how big is your um, serial um, region, uh, uh, you will um, reach an upper upper bound of your um, of the possible um, speed up which you can um, expect from um, uh, parallelize your code. So you. Um, so if you, for example, if you um, if you look at, at this um, 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 this this example here, so so basically there is this um, uh, typically typically um, um, typically. Um, um, if you if you look for optimizations in your program. Um, typically, a program um, spent around eighty percent in in twenty percent of your code, and um, um, and you have to identify the region. Which um, I mean, if you want to now to optimize um, this part of your code, it it, it makes sense to. Um, um, to to speed up this twenty percent, um, which which basically um, eighty percent of the time is is spent in, in the code, um, and and you have to understand also um, at what point you I mean if you start to optimize your application you have to um, to understand at what time you um, you you stop <laughs> the optimization because if you um, optimize let's say the part which is um, only um, used twenty percent of the time and you speed this up, let's say by 
is here this is example to speed up this this part by uh, factor five and the overall gain is um, mar marginal um, and if you spend uh, speed up a, a part which you can uh, basically uh, I mean if you speed up this part here by factor two then you see that your your um, um, your, um, your application uh, yeah yeah, you, you will profit um, from this uh, much more. So it, it's it's basically important first of all to understand how uh, what kind of um, I mean what kind of uh, what your application is doing, and then um, you have to identify the the, the region which are really potentially uh, useful for speeding up. Um, um, so um, basically. Um, in, in a, if you want to optimize your 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 application, there uh, you you need to it, it's it's wise to to follow this basically this this is path um, not starting from just um, optimizing something and then recognizing at the end that that all your time is which you spend in speeding up a, a kernel it's 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 only marginal. Um, so basically, the idea would be um, to to do this um, maybe in a in a in a way that you that that you really. First of all, you start to profile to profile it. So um, um, one can you can profile this code uh, your code. So we will um, in the second part of of, of this um, of today we will um, uh, take a look to such profiling tool. Then you can if you, if you augment your um, code with, a, uh, with, profi with with profiling application, then you can measure this. Um, so you can um, as a second step. Um, and you can collect um, performance data and analyze this. Um, and then in the third step, you analyze this um, um, performance data by um, calculation of different matrix. And by this will um, lead to the, the identification of uh, performance pro um, problems. And then you can, in, in, a, in a fourth step, um, optimize this region to, to gain, um, um, yeah, to speed up your, your application. Um, so there are different um, um, factors in your application which um, uh, which um, uh, which um, can um, impact your performance. So there are there are um, sequential performance factors, like the computation. So um, for example, um, right. Performance factors um, given by the, the cache and the, the memory um, uh, layout, um, and um, also the input and output can uh, uh, are um, inputs for um, sequential performance. Sorry, the, uh, my, my, my connection is sometimes a bit... Um, yeah, Jakob, if you can switch off your video, um, okay. then you should be better, I think. It's better now? Okay. Um, and, and then there are factors for the parallel uh, performance factors, which one can address. So basically, the partitioning or, or the decomposition of your of your physical. Um, it depends on what what you're doing um, on your of your of your simulations. And when there are the communications um, between these different um, MPI tasks, and you can um, then you can do multi threading, um, and also synchronization between different tasks are can be. Um, can can be factors for for, for um, yeah for um, performance issues. And so there there are a lot of uh, different things if you want if if you uh, uh, which which need to be identified before you um, basically can start or um, if you want to optimize your your applications and it's it's not really obvious from the beginning where are the bottlenecks in, in the application so. Um, yeah. So as I said, so, so today we will start with, with an analysis um, of, of what um, what kind of issues can happen in, in parallel applications. Um, 
So basically, this is um, also this is important if you want to to set up your um, um, application on, on Cyclone. I mean, if you, for example, if you if you want to um, do scaling plots, um, or if you want to apply for computing time, you have to um, show that your applications um, can use um, our facility um, efficiently. So basically, um, uh, this this first point. Um, 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 I think it will also help you um, in, in to understand a bit. Or I mean, I will just um, give you some overview um, over um, over scaling and so on. So this might help um, might be helpful um, for for, um, 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 for for such applications. Um, and then in the in the second part, I will uh, discuss um, how to use um, scope scope P to to profile your applications. Uh, show some some. Some examples, and then in the, in the third part, I just will go a bit over parallel I/O, which can be a factor in optimization of, of your applications. Uh, okay. Okay, as I already said, um, I, I follow um, basically the, the performance um, audit from from this um, Center of Excellence um, pop. Um, and I already showed you some uh, the web website, so it um, might be useful if you're interested to take a look. Um, look there, and yeah, there, there you can also find more materials and, and so on. Uh, okay, so let's um, we will go basically through this through this uh, this point. So um, before you, um, uh, I mean, basically there you can structure your analysis and. and Using these points, so um, uh, first of all, it's very important that you take notes if you start to um, if you start to um, to do an analysis. I mean, for for example, what kind of version of code you take, and, and um, that you can reproduce um, your data or simulations later. Especially if you optimize it, it's very it's very good to have um, um, uh, these these informations because basically you want to show also later what kind of stuff you optimize um, and how was the situation before and if you don't take notes then basically you have to redo this um, what you did at the beginning then it's 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 important to understand uh, what kind of uh, what how the structure is of your application so basically probably you, you do an to you do io at the beginning so you read in some some configuration or some some specific um, data set then you basically probably in the in the middle in, in the computational part you have some um, some uh, some uh, integration of, uh, of of your of, of your physical degrees or um, uh, you do some um, some work on your on your data and then probably at the end you have some some output and between that you you have some probably some exchange of informations um, using um, API functions. This may, might help to to identify already regions of interest um, which you want to might or which you want to to optimize. For example, um, um, regions where you have um, workload where you it's basically your computational kernels, or maybe I/O or communication regions. It can also be that you you have some rare um, uh, uh, regions where which you enter in in special cases. Maybe if you're if if your algorithm is um, diverging or so. Um, then, as a first step, it's it's good to to um, collect scalability informations, and then um, um, basing on on this one can go a bit deeper um, to look in the efficiency of the application with respect to the load balance or the serial performance and the communication. So we let's go through this point. We I mean, already said something. Um, as I said, it's it's basically uh, first of all important to to achieve um, that, that that you can reproduce your your data and simulations. Um, so it's very helpful to document the environment and the applications uh, specific um, parameters. Uh, for example, on which machine you're running, what kind of partition um, you're using, what kind of how many OpenMP threads, um, what kind of library. I mean. What kind of data sets you, you're using um, if you assess um, your your application? 
Um, also, with respect to what kind of libraries you use um, um, for compiling, what kind of compiler flex, if you change the compiler flex, um, maybe your, your application performs differently or faster, or, or some bottlenecks are disappearing. So it's in, it's would be good to to, to take notes. Um, and also with respect to the um, um, parallelization. Um, so also get an overview on your application with uh, um, um, this an um, overall context of um, to to have an, uh, to to understand uh, basically to 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 understand uh, what 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 I already said what kind of what what a, what your application is mainly doing maybe um, we can one can do this basically also with performance tools uh, or with profiling tools. Uh, like this score p, which which we look at later too. So maybe if you don't really know what uh, uh, how how your application is working, because you maybe took an um, application from a colleague or from um, from the community, then um, this might be a, a tool to, to to access. So maybe to just get an um, overall look how the uh, yeah how the functions are um, how the dependencies are in your applications. Um, and as I said, it um, might, might be useful to really um, uh, identify regions of interest, which one can then benchmark um, or, um, uh, um, scale up and, and see how, uh, how they're, they're behaving if you, you change the parallelization or if you change the I.O. or the data size. Okay. Um, so I, I just uh, selected two, two um, I mean, for this part, I selected just two, um, two, two examples. Um, one example is uh, this, this model, um, WRF, um, so weather research and forecast model. Um, it's, uh, it's parallelized using domain decomposition techniques um, where the communication between the domains are done by MPI. And each domain, the computation kernel of each domain, can can be parallelized by by open MP. Um, I I will show some some volumes here. I have um, um, outputs of size 300 MB to 2.5 uh, gigabytes, and uh, the test case here is on uh, weather forecasting. Basically, it's um, um, consists of an um, integration uh, which is done by Bunga uh, Kutaski, um, and the yeah. And the resolution is um, uh, here used this uh, chosen with respect to the physical. Uh, um, so the region of interest maybe of this uh, this kernel is or of this uh, application is basically the computation kernel, which we see um, how it scales, and may um, and, and and also how the I/O is working. So um, basically, you need. For weather forecasting, to, you need to to read in first of all your your um, the set where you're starting from, and then um, you're interested in in forecasting. So you would like to to write um, configurations of your your weather after maybe each hour um, to your disk. And this application is basically used here at the facility um, to to um, forecast weather for for Cyprus. Um, maybe it's worth to take a look to this this page here. You can see some um, some weather information for today, tomorrow. I think it's it runs um, this application is running um, every morning and evening to to forecast weather for for the next forty eight hours. Um, yeah, maybe some advertisement. You can see the rainfall here, for example. The Cyprus it's, it seems not to rain today. Yeah. Um, and the other um, application which I will um, show um, is based on linear solver um, procedure. It's uh, called TD Alpha MG. Uh, it stands for the main decomposition ad adaptive algebra quantity with uh, methods for lattice QCD. Um, and it's uh, basically uh, it solves a linear a huge linear equations uh, equation involving the Dirac operator. Uh, it's a four-dimensional stencil um, uh, operator um, with next neighbor interaction, and and it basically um, uh, it uses uh, 
I mean, it's it's causing the the lattice into smaller lattices. So the region of interest is the causes less. It's where the um, uh, matrix is quite small, um, and uh, um, the, which means that if your domain is getting small, the, the computational workload or the computational um, task is small, but the the surface of the domains becomes larger. And then um, you need more, more more communications, which is a bottleneck in the scalability, which we will see. Which we will see. This code is used in um, large scale simulations of of um, of this QCD. Um, yeah. So I picked this up as, a, as an example. Um, okay. So <clears throat> if you want to, to understand, first of all, um, uh, maybe the first step is really to to do an um, scalability analysis. Um, basically, uh, and, and doing this for the, the region of interest, which you which you identify in the first step. Um, so you can do this basically by first of all um, investigate the overall scalability, and then um, um, looking at how the, the runtime of the application change, um, um, if the number of cores are changing, and the number of nodes are changing. So ideas to 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 run with different numbers of processes. Um, so and and the scalability analysis of of your application will then give a first hint on on the parallel overhead. So if you will see that your um, basic your runtime breaks down at some point, this would um, lead to the. I mean, this would be uh, the interpretation would be then that there the parallelization overhead is increasing, and, and this might be then a bottleneck in in some applications. Um, yeah, and, and you you can uh, put I mean uh, you can do this together with um, profilers, um, which which then uh, which then nicely will this is you can nicely identify which kernels really um, uh, lead to this breakdown, and then we can target this this kernels for um, all these um, different functions for for optimization. As I said, um, it's important to take notes because you you forget this always, and then um, later you are just suffering because you have to redo this. Or you even do this on, on a scratch and where, where your data is um, deleted and then you for, i mean uh, this, this happens for example here on cyclone you have if you do if you use a scratch and um, basically they, they said that after 10 after one week um, the files are deleted um, i think in the moment this is not the case but if they really um, do a, um, uh, um, if they if they need space and probably they, this can happen, and then uh, in this case, you, if you forgot to, to take notes, then uh, the data is gone, and then you have to redo this. So it's always <laughs> always good to remember this. Um, okay, so let's let's take um, uh, first look to um, the scalability of WR, WRF. Um, this is here um, basically strong scaling of um, using different um, different box sizes. Um, it's plotted I mean, here. It's, it's basically the time for integration step. So I already profiled this, um, and I just um, show here the, the scalability of the um, um, of, of the computational kernel, which which uses basically this Runge-Kutta third um, order integration for different uh, box sizes, where you see uh, against um, uh, the number of um, processors, um, and you see that uh, basically for the larger sizes. Um, uh, which I shown here, which, which clearly also takes longer because they're large. Um, um, you see its scalability. Basically, these are the ideal scaling here shown at this dotted point. Um, and um, because uh, the computation itself are um, basically only needs to exchange boundary conditions, um, you the, you have an, uh, the computation you have a computation overhead. I mean the, the computation is dominating. Which means you, you see that you can really start with going to larger um, processors. While on the, so, uh, the smaller size here, basically you um, the, the, the domain. You, so so you, what you do is you have a three-dimensional space, and you you you, you partition the space in, in two domains. And if you increase the parallelization, the domains get smaller and smaller. If you um, uh, fix uh, the size of your of your box, um, which means if the, if the size of the domain gets smaller, that your computation gets smaller, first step, and then you see that that your your basically your comp computation breaks down if you increase uh, the parallelization. 
Um, you can also look at the, the I.O. of this application. And, and what you see here is basically that the I.O. is for the same test case. Yes, um, it looks, looks, looks pretty OK. So it's, it's constant. And you don't see a performance, is, uh, from performance issues for, for WF in this case. OK, you have here this outlier. Um, which, um, uh, which happened here on, on the Barcelona Computing Center where Alex is running. Um, okay, um, it might be useful um, to do weak scaling. So this was strong scaling. So by keeping the box size um, constant, uh, weak scaling is basically the, uh, you keep the, the size per processor um, constant. And if you increase on the number of processors, your whole uh, box size gets uh, increases. Um, by doing so, you would see, for example, that if you if if then the overall computation increases, then you would just, you would see that your that your communication communication overheads um, um, are increasing, uh, which means uh, which which um, you could basically identify if you have problems in your communication. Or um, depending on what you what what actually communication is doing, um, um, you might get a better understanding um, uh, yeah, from about your com uh, communication overheads. Um, here you see that it's basically also fine, I guess, in this case. Um, okay, for the for the, for the smaller one here, uh, for the larger, for the largest. No, this is, uh, yeah, for the largest one you. If you have some some step up here, um, but it's basically flat, so this this, this looks, uh, looks I would say fine. Um, an an example of of the of the multiple solver um, the strong scaling um, here on on cyclone the blue blue points um, um, basically scaled up to thirty two nodes. You see basically good scaling for this for the small size. Um, while um, if, if you go to a larger computer like, like Supermook, you see basically that um, at some point the domain gets too small. So it's again um, strong scaling, which means you you really decrease the, the, the domain size per core, um, which means you, you decrease the computational lo load per, um, per process. And at some point, the communication overhead is too large, um, which means this will dominate then your um, computation, which you see basically here after um, 128 nodes. Um, this happens here, where you then your the time to solution just increases. Um, it might be also useful to, to just scan um, um, the single node performance. So um, for example, if your, your computational kernel is um, bandwidth bound, um, it might be useful to understand um, uh, how, how the, your kernel behaves if you increase or decrease the, uh, the volume. Um, and this is here done for also for the energy on, on a single node by just um, varying the volume um, of, of, of the application or the physical volume size of your, of your kernel. Um, and then you see there is an optimum somewhere here. Um, and, and, and basically, um, if you um, basically um, by, by doing this, it, it, it might be useful if you want to strong scale to this. I mean, if you want to speed up your application, this will give you um, basically the ideal um, volume um, size per process or per node. Um, uh, so if you want to speed up your application, it might be good to, to choose um, uh, uh, for for your larger um, um, problem size to uh, choose a volume, which is um, which which has I mean which is similar to this per per node. Um, okay, <laughs> I know if this is was now understandable. I mean, if you have questions or remarks or whatever, um, just um, um, yeah, I mean, you can write in the chat or or so on. I guess. Um, and also open your microphone. Um, okay. okay, so um, we, we, now we go a bit about uh, uh, through this uh, this different efficiencies. 
So for example, one can, uh, um, okay, this is basically from the scaling plots, you can, um, you can, yeah, you'll get an understanding on uh, what kind of performance you gain through parallelization. Um, and maybe an ideal, uh, um, another look at this um, is to, to look at speed up plots where you have uh, basically your actual time, you have a reference time, which is usually um, the time on, on one node or one, on one core. Um, and you plot just uh, the, the ratio to your actual time. Um, there's, it's, it's even easier to understand uh, where, um, where you lose performance. However, if you do this, you always, um, uh, you, you basically don't see the reference time anymore in the, um, in the, um, in the plot. So it might be useful also to keep this. Um, and it's easier to see uh, from this kind of um, speed up plots, um, um, yeah, how, how efficient your parallelization is. Um, basically, so if you, yeah, this is this is done here for WRF, which is uh, volume of, of, of 384 um, square times 50. Um, uh, the reference time is here now on the slowest point. So this is just um, the time of this point divided by this point, so which gives a one. And then you see um, basically you can, you can plot um, the ideal scaling here, shown as this um, yeah, senior line here. And then you see that okay, if you go to larger more, um, um, parallelization, you basically lose a bit of efficiency, but this looks very, very fine for, for this test case of WIF. Um, basically, it's easier to see, uh, if I show this here, and this is basically the, uh, this, this, this lines here. You see it a bit because I, I, I put here the, uh, this ideal um, scaling also as a reference, um, but it's easier to show, to see from the, from the speed up um, plot. Um, the same here done for, for the DRFMG and okay, and the DRFMG is used, just saw the, the deviation, which was clear already from the um, time to solution um, um, plot. Um, but how, however, you see here really that, that um, for the first um, two, third, two nodes, um, the, the scaling is um, the ideal nodes. Okay, so, um, yes. So uh, in, the, in your previous um, plot, do you take an uh, average? Uh, um, do you averaging on the points, or you just uh, run run once for each point? Yeah, this is um, in this case I just run one. Um, um, yes. So basically, to really, um, yeah, if the machine is busy and um, 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 yeah, it's it's good to redo this because you always see some some standard deviation and um, I mean you see some fluctuations and um, yes so back, best practice would be to, to to redo this runs and then you would maybe um, see some 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 larger fluctuations here um, yes so this is the, the let's say the, the proper way to if you want to officially present something you have to run it uh, yeah, yeah. a lot of times. Okay. Basically, yes. Um, I mean, for uh, first assessment to really to really understand your scalability, um, it, it might be okay to to um, to run to run um, yeah to to have uh, low statistics. Um, but okay, the, the right way would to would be to 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 redo this um, to to really see. Uh, uh, if you, for example, I mean, if you have, I mean, if you have scalability like this, then okay, then it's, it looks very fine. But if you have something like a performance uh, bottleneck somewhere, and you, you're not sure if this is um, your application or the machine, then uh, it's wise to to redo this to understand if it's um, was from the from from the current status of the machine. Um, for example, on these very large machines, this can happen that. Some that you get a um, uh, that you get racks where maybe also other applications are running on different nodes, but maybe using the same switches, the same communication channels, and then you would see some performance uh, performance decrease in your application. So um, yes, it's uh, 
that we see machines are living, I mean, are used by others and um, uh, sometimes um, also show some performance issues from, from the hardware side. side. So yeah, it's, it's wise to, to redo this. Okay, thanks. Yeah. But okay, it's also it has to be also practical. Sometimes, if you run to the, run this, uh, uh, one has to, to see um, if it's yeah. But okay, from a, as a, as a physicist, I would say yes, one has to read this a lot of times. Yeah. But um, yeah. um, okay, so um, for, for the for the now for the for the remaining um, slides, I just will go over different efficiencies. Um, and, and and try to um, give you some hint, um, maybe to to uh, where performance issues uh, can rise from. Um, um, yeah, to better to better basically um, target down if your application has performance issues, um, yeah, and also to understand uh, from yeah from where they are, they, they, they could come. Um, so basically, um, one can define this, this global efficiency, which is um, uh, which uh, summar summarize how well the parallelization of, of the application works. So it's basically the global global efficiency on this formula, uh, given as a parallel efficiency times a computational efficiency. Um, a, a high number of this global efficiency would, would indicate that the parallelization is working well and um, um, that 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 you might uh, need to focus your optimization more on the serial um, performance or on the part which is uh, more on the computational kernels. For example, if your parallelization is, um, is very well, then you can consider, for example, um, to, if your code is running on CPUs, and uh, it might be helpful to, to, um, to port this to GPUs to, to speed it up further, one example. Um, if the global efficiency is bad, then this might be an indication for um, bad parallelization or um, also for, comp uh, for bad computational efficiency. In general, this, um, this, this number would give you an overview of how well the parallelization of the application works and how well the hardware is used. Um, here, um, I just will go through the um, different parallelization um, cases. So you basically can also give a formula. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the efficiency, the parallel efficiencies, you can calculate by um, the average of your computational time over the total time, which means then you see that um, basically if you if you ideally, in the ideal case, you have the computational time plus your communication time, um, uh, which gives you total time. So this, this ratio will give you uh, basically how, how, yeah, how, how much of the code is, um, used for computation, um, while um, the computational um, reference um, um, is a bit more difficult in, I mean, can, can be given by, by this, so useful computation on a reference case, so if you have some um, over the um, summation of the time spent in, in, in useful um, computation. Um, maybe can be accessed by, by changing, for example, the compiler flex um, and, and, and maybe also using some, um, some tools to understand, for example, if, if, you're vector, if you don't use the vectorization of, of the CPUs efficiently, to understand how, how much of this, um, uh, uh, yeah, how efficient you use the CPU in this case. Okay, here we will go to uh, go a bit about the parallelization uh, efficiency. Um, Okay, you know, we're going to summarize um, um, a bit about this. Um, Sorry, so can you re-explain the previous um, formula? Mm -hmm. I'm just not sure uh, what each term there is. The last two formulas. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, so the the the, the total, I mean, the parallel efficiency is basically you can give give as um, so if you if you the total time of your application, uh, you 
can maybe ideally you can split this in, in into a part where you um, where you have uh, the computational part and the part which is maybe consisting of of of, of communication. Then this ratio gives you basically uh, how how well uh, um, how, how much of your total time is is used for the computation. Yeah. This is a um, parallel efficiency. Yeah. So C CPI. What's CPI? Uh, computational. Um, uh, computation per, per instruction. Okay. So I mean, okay. For if you if you go to um, um, uh, um, yeah, this would be one measure. So if you if you go to uh, the CPU set, you you can uh, do um, more than one floating point operation per, per instruction. So you can basically put uh, you can vectorize. Um, uh, your computation um, and okay you can per, you, there are performance measures which which really can assess uh, um, how many uh, computation per instruction you're doing so how well your uh, your um, your um, computational kernels vectorize um, I mean I, I in the in the in the in the previous um, course on um, Direction to open MP. Uh, at the end, I was um, was was going a bit about auto vectorization of compilers. Um, and this goes a bit in this this direction. Um, um, yeah. But okay, it depends a bit on the on the application and uh, yeah. Hey, thanks. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Okay. I want uh, here. I want to uh, here. I want to go a bit about the parallel efficiencies um, uh, and the different uh, things which which can maybe go wrong or all right. Um, so basically, you can split up the parallel efficiency in, in, in the load balance of your of your application times an efficiency in the computation. Um, basically, um, so basically, this uh, summarizes all the performance issues which are directly observed uh, at synchronization or at the or in the communication construct. Um, So it, it's, it's basically the, describes the share of the time left for computation besides all the, these constructs. Um, uh, it it's, um, indicates the overhead of, uh, of MPI and it can, it can cause us by problems in load balance um, or in the communication efficiency. So basically, you can, uh, this communication efficiency you can also split then up in serial, serialization efficiency and transfer efficiency. So let's um, let's let's go through this a bit. So um, load, load um, balance efficiency um, basically summarizes efficiencies caused by load balances in the application. So if you, for example, you have a put load balance uh, in this case where you have the computation, um, then you have communication, then you have computation. Then you see that the, the, the com computation is basically in line, and the computation uh, communication is in line. While um, the, the you have a bad load balance if you have um, um, if if the the balance between the computation and the communication is uh, um, different on the different processes. So basically, the computation here in process one the computation is uh, almost a factor too fast than the process at zero, which means um, yeah you, you get a low uh, bad load balance. Um, this leads to, to time lost in, in the synchronization during the com, uh, communication. Um, and um, uh, this, can, this matrix can be computed by just comparing the time of all processors spent in useful computation. Um, we can trace this down using, using score P, so we can, can take a look later to this. Um, I, I mean, you just, yeah. 
then we have uh, uh, communication efficiency, uh, which re reflects the loss of efficiency by communication routines like um, API send, API receive, or any other data transfer routines. Um, here, this metric can be computed by um, um, yeah, by, the, by this um, this ratio, so the, the time spent in the computation over the total time. Um, usually, overheads is the exchange of data using communications, um, and it can be split in serial efficiency and transfer efficiency. So, um, for example, um, Uh, so, serialization efficiency describes loss of efficiency due to dependency between processes. And dependencies can be observed as waiting time in, in, in API calls. So, uh, basically, here you see that uh, um, this, this basically is waiting, um, uh, this process here is waiting that, that, that this process is um, um, finished the computation. Um, and, and so on, this, this process here is waiting that this um, process is, is then um, uh, finished the computation. Um, so basically, you can uh, calculate this by if you have, if you get rid of the, if you assume that you have an, an ideal network, um, um, then, then this is the ratio of the computation in this um, ideal network. Right? It's, shown, it's shown basically here. Um, and um, uh, compared to the total time, this uh, if you if you get rid of this communication times overheads, um, uh, basically this is an indication if your efficiency serial efficiency is, is low, it's an indication that you need to um, optimize your workloads. Um, basically, um, better sharing um, the workloads that and, and that, that that not um, the process side is waiting uh, for each other. Um, I think we almost. Um, Okay. That was um, run into the level of, I don't know how much time. I mean, okay, I get, I maybe go in, uh, to, to transfer um, efficiency and then um, we can maybe, maybe make a, um, a, a break and then we can um, 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 continue later. Um, so the transfer efficiency um, is basically then there. Um, 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 describes a loss of efficiency due to um, the actively transfer. So basically, um, uh, just shown, shown here. So this two seconds here. Um, it's, it can be computed via um, the total um, uh, time in your ideal network over the total time of the application with um, uh, not an ideal network. So basically, um, the ratio of, uh, of this total time uh, against the ratio of the um, ideal network time. Um, and, and okay, this might, um, in, uh, this will give implications to maybe optimize your um, transfer, for, for example, using non blocking um, API functions or um, starting or changing a bit um, how you communicate. Um, for example, um, communicate earlier or change the computation such that you you can um, that you can overlay the um, computation with um, the communications. Um, this could be a factor to to optimize um, this. Okay, um, so and maybe as an outlook for um, the next part. Um, uh, here um, was a profile of, of, of WIF for for their for this this case for this volume so it's a quite small volume. Um, um, they are basically the scaling plot again um, so the execution time against the number of um, processors um, where um, okay I'm back. Hello? Okay. Um, so shall we do a break now and then carry on in 30 minutes or so?
yes, we can do this. Um, yeah, let's do this. Okay, so let's meet back everyone at uh, 11.30 exactly, we carry on. <laughs>